My name is Ed Neff. As a citizen of Earth, I am here to alert you to the probability of life on Mars. What you are about to see is a five-part investigative report from Haitian television. I've purchased this broadcast time myself because I think it's that important. I'll be back at the end with a closing thought. Yours sincerely, Ed Neff. Back to TV Morning. It's 7.18. Late last week, NASA reported the loss of the Mars probe, the latest in a series of failures. It was hoped the probe would answer the old age question, is there life on Mars? Today, Jovan Ivan Van Sucre Moore is in the United States to examine that question. We go live via satellite to Jovan. Jovan, you're in the United States. That's right, Ephraim. I'm in Pasadena, California, outside the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the control center for the failed Mars mission. The recent loss of the Mars Polo Lender has left this community in shock and still searching for an answer. What went wrong? And is there life on Mars? Lunge from Earth in January of 1999. The Mars Polar Lander's primary mission was to study the climate of Mars and dig beneath the surface for evidence of ice. Frozen water could prove that long ago, life might have existed on Mars. And if there is ice, deeper on the ground and away from the frigid surface, there might be liquid water. But after a harrowing 11-month flight through space, the 165 million US dollar spaceship went dead last Thursday, just as it was preparing to enter Mars' atmosphere. Efforts to contact the lender have come up empty, and NASA seems ready to call it quits. While there is no way of knowing the fate of the lender, there are two common theories. JPL's Dr. Justin Futch explains. One notion going on around here is that it made it to the surface, but that it fell into a crater or stumbled over on level ground. The other is that it malfunctioned during its descent. It, it crashed and it never made it to the surface. Oh Entry and descent landings are really difficult. They're very complex. There's a lot that the spacecraft has to do properly. A lot can go wrong. Anything from the spacecraft's autopilot malfunctioning down to a loose nut. While both the United States and the former Soviet Union have sent their spacecraft to Mars since the 1960s, this is not the first letdown for JPL and their Mars projects. Soon after its liftoff in 1965, NASA's Mariner 3 failed to eject its protective shield. This essentially left all of the instruments and sensors under the top and the added weight threw the craft away from Mars and out into deep space. In the 1970s, Viking 1 and 2 were great successes for NASA. Each spacecraft consisted of an orbiter and a lander. The orbiter returned detailed images of the Martian landscape, while the lander parachuted to the surface and deployed several instruments. Thousands of images collected from these missions were valuable assets in planning NASA's later Mars projects. But recent luck has not been so good. Contact was lost with 1993's Mars Observer three days before its scheduled Mars orbit. Its whereabouts remain a mystery. And in September of this year, the Mars Climate Orbiter was destroyed when a math error caused it to miss its target altitude. Scientists believe it skipped off the surface of Mars and into space. Despite these recent setbacks, NASA is sticking to its future Mars exploration plans. So why all the continued interest in the icy red planet? Well, part of the answer comes from the desolate and icy regions of planet Earth. Well, I'll have that in part two of my story tomorrow. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Javon. I wouldn't want to live there. No? It's too cold. I can't stand the cold. <laughs> well, then, let's ask Arthur if our weather's going to be anything like Mars. Arthur, how's the weather? Thanks, Ephraim. Looks like it's going to be pretty hot today. <laughs>